Yeah, well, we just got back from practice. Uh, we went up to Purdue and practiced, and it was uh, great. Um, you know, I, I think our guys are looking forward to it. You know, it's just been a strange time when you haven't played in, and when you played so many games in two weeks, and now it seems like we've played none in two months. You know, it just that's the way it is. But uh, everything else has been great here. You know, the, the the people have done the best job they can do. Quarantining yesterday was a little weird. You know, I I uh, I never been through anything like that, but it wasn't that bad either. And I think all in all, you know, now we're in a normal situation. Uh, we test every day. We we uh, have good practice. We had a practice last night in the uh, facility here. We went up to Purdue today. It's about an hour and 15 minute ride. And uh, tomorrow we'll be back practicing here and, and then go up for the game. So uh, we're excited about it. We're ready for it and we'll see what happens. The first question will come from uh, John Nio at the Detroit News. John, if you unmute yourself, you're good to go. Hey, Tom, I'm just wondering, you mentioned it, how weird it is. I'm wondering about life in the bubble there. And I guess what's the hardest part of it for the players, do you think? <laughs> you know, it's not a bad bubble. I mean, we're at the JW Marriott, so there's, there's been worse bubbles, you know. Um, but uh, it's different because you really don't leave your floor or the room I'm in right now, which is our film room and our food room. And those are the only two rooms you're really allowed in. Uh, you can't really go outside for a walk or things like that. So, you know, it's, I mean, hell, there's worse things in the world. There's people have been through a lot more than we have. And right now um, it's just different, but it's not, it's not necessarily a bad different. Those guys are used to having uh, roommates, et cetera. Is that part a little different too? I mean, these guys are a little more isolated than normal or are you? Yeah. You know, I think it is. I mean, they're used to, you know, uh, sit there in the room, watch a game or BS with each other, you know, all those things. And, and now you don't get to, but every once in a while we have a stretch out in the hallway and we try to do some things to keep them together. We'll have some meetings down here. We can do that. Uh, so it's, uh, it'll work out, you know, before you know it, we'll be playing games. And if we play on Thursday, once we play that game, if you win, everything gets crazy, you know, and then you're back to one day prep. So, um, we're just trying to get through today and then by tomorrow it's day before a game and it's game time. And that's kind of what we're looking forward to. All right. Our next question is going to come from Kyle Austin at MY followed by Chris Solari. Tom, speaking of strange, just wondering what it's like to be up there at Mackey and have an NCAA floor there and, and kind of know you're playing a game you know, an arena you're so familiar with, but obviously not playing Purdue. And is it a chance to kind of exercise some of your, your recent Maggie demons there? Well, I called Painter on my way up and I said, hey, the least you could do is tell your wife we're coming over for brunch. You beat me twice this year. I think that's, you owe me that. And uh, he said she'd be glad to, but I never got a call from her. So, um, you know, it was good. People up there, at least you're in Big Ten country, they were all nice. And, uh, you know, they did a nice job with the arena and, um, you know, everything's good. I mean, uh, you know, there's a, it seems like there's a million things you could complain about because it's just different, but, uh, there's a lot of great things too. And the best thing of all is I got, you know, 15 guys here who get a chance to play in the NCAA tournament. You know, you take that for granted at Michigan state, but you really take it for granted, uh, until you don't play one last year. And so I think, um, you know, there's that excitement. Now, I, I got to tell you, and talking to a lot of coaches around here, everybody's a little concerned about, uh, you know, how their kids are dealing with all these different things. As it was stated by John, you know, you, you don't have roommates, you don't have this, you don't have that. You know, those things seem like good things, but they're different things. And so who knows how everybody's going to handle it? Who knows who else is going to come down with the virus? I think we're crazy if we think the way that went with Virginia and Kansas, that that's not going to happen again to somebody. So we're just trying to keep our heads straight and uh, stay under the radar and, uh, and try to prepare for UCLA. And that's what we're doing. The next question comes from Chris Solari, followed by Matt Charbonneau. Hey, Tom, I kind of wanted to, to, to get your opinion on Tiger Campbell. I mean, you obviously recruited the kid 
uh, when he was Jaron's teammate. And, and just what have you seen uh, on film from him maybe that's different from Lalu to to now uh, that he's at UCLA? His hair is the same, and that's how you can I can notice him. But um, he's he's to me he's a lot thinner. I think he's done a great job with his body. He's quicker. Um, I think his shot is better. Um, you know, he's a likable kid. I, you know, we always liked him. Um, but I think he's matured a lot. And uh, I think they uh, have done a, a great job with him because he's still the straw that turns that drink. He's more of the traditional true point guard. He can score at some, but um, he's looking to get people involved. He's, if you ask me, he's gotten quicker, thinner, and uh, and those things kind of go hand in hand and, and a little more under control with his game that I think has really helped him too. And, and from the coaching standpoint, you obviously have played UCLA the last two years. Does that How much does that familiarity maybe help when you're in such a new environment in the first four and – and playing in a different, obviously you played at Mackey too. So that, that's yeah, a different. I, I don't know if those things help much at this time. I, I've known Mick for a long time. I knew him when uh, he was at uh, Cincinnati and uh, or back when he was an assistant with hugs. And uh, you know, the one thing that's bad is the West coast team is usually a little softer uh, over the years, but uh, you know, Mick brings a, a Midwest flavor to it his teams are tough he's done a great job building that program again you know last year he had some problems kids didn't want to buy in and now he got kids by that have bought in and i have a lot of respect for a lot of respect for mick and the way he's done it and and doing it in an environment that's not as easy to do it in so uh you know he brings a smash mouth kind of team and uh it'll be a different team than maybe some we played uh, out west. Next question comes from Matt Charbonneau, followed by Brendan Quinn. Tom, I know this is the this is the ultimate one game at a time sort of setup, but you've made deep runs with all different seeds, all different levels of team, different types of team. What is it? Has there been one thing that's consistent in all those teams that have made deep runs? And do you see something in this team? Again, I know it's you haven't played a game yet. Is there something in this team that could make you think? Maybe they've got it in them too. Well, when you see the last two weeks of the season and how we played, uh, you do get excited about that. And then you see, you know, the last two weeks of the season and a couple games we played, you know, now sometimes it's matchups like Maryland might not be a great matchup for us, but when you can play with a Michigan, Ohio state, uh, Illinois, I mean, you could argue Illinois has played as well as anybody. If we beat them this the soundest of the three when they were fully loaded. So um, I think we have some potential for that. I see that in our team. The consistency is, has been the problem, but uh, it's a little different too. Uh, you know, normally we're going in and you're pre preparing for two games. Now you go in, you're probably underdogs in all three games. And uh, so it's a little harder to look ahead. I still want to win the weekend. The weekend just became a little longer and uh and so, uh, you know, in this year of the pandemic, in this year of 2020, it's 2021 now, but um, I might as well experience some more new things. <laughs> and, uh, you know, not ever playing in a playing game, that's a new thing. Not ever playing, you know, three games to get out of the weekend, that's a new thing. There's a lot of new things, but just think if you accomplish them, uh, they'll be really cool new things. And, and considering that, obviously, we know the finish to the season, but then now you've had one game in the last, you know, whatever the heck it is. Do you feel like this is probably the freshest you've been just based on the reality of the schedule? And is that a good thing? You, you know, it's funny because you, you you can say that if you want to talk about the cup being half full, if you want to talk about it being half empty, you'd say, God, you don't play a game for seven, eight days after you've played, you know, every other day for two weeks. Um Nobody knows how that's going to affect us. I do think we're going to be fresher, but, you know, laying around worries me too, because, you know, we can't do the things that you'd want to do, you know? So you're, you're spending a lot of time laying in a hotel room, which I'm not sure is good either. So guys, it's everybody's guess how everybody's going to react to these different things. I think you're going to see some teams that 
aren't as good beating teams that are as good. I think you're going to see some teams that are really good lose games. I think you're going to see some strange things because it's going to come down to how everybody handles the adversity they've all been placed in. And uh, it's not been bad and it's been the same for everybody. So it's even, but uh, I, I can't say that I have a blueprint to tell you like I normally feel. I just do feel like we're excited to be here. Um, you know, and I know that three weeks ago, you know, nobody gave us a chance, including probably most of you and <laughs> hell, probably maybe even me. And uh, we fought our way through that. That took some courage and guts and, and uh, I'm proud of them for that. So hopefully we can build on that and look at a team like Maryland. Why didn't we not play well against them either time? You know, sometimes there's bad matchups and you just don't play well against certain teams. And let's hope it was that way. Because other than that, in seven of our last 10 games, we played pretty well. And nine of our last 10, we played quad one team. So um, I'm not worried about facing anybody in this tournament. I mean, I don't feel comfortable with UCLA and BYU or Texas, but I don't feel afraid of UCLA, BYU, Texas, or anybody else because we truly, truly have played the best teams in the country on a night-in, night-out basis, especially that last two, three weeks. Next, we'll go to Brendan Quinn, followed by Graham Couch. Hey, Tom, it's such an interesting matchup. You guys mirror each other in a lot of ways and then don't really at all in some other ways. And I wonder, you know, for you, what, what do you think are the biggest similarities and differences between uh, you guys playing style wise, personnel wise, whatever? You know, they don't play real big and we don't play real big. Um, you know, I think they are a tough, tougher team and pretty good defensively. And they've been a little sporadic offensively too. And he controls things a lot more. They don't run like we do, but we do run a little better. The Juzang kid from from uh, Kentucky has played well for them lately. And, uh, and of course, uh, their point guard is, you know, he's been in the system now for three years. So, um, yeah, you're right. There's some similarities. There's some differences. But I do like the matchup. I think we match up pretty good. I think as coaches, we kind of believe in the same thing. I mean, uh, Mick is a tough, you know, he's a, he's a Bob Huggins disciple. I'm a Judd Heathcote disciple. I don't know if that's good or bad or indifferent, but it's a hell of a lot better than this golf swing. I'm looking at a view on the uh, golf course here. So I'll just say that uh, we do have some similarities. Uh, for a West Coast team, I think they're different than a lot of West Coast teams because he came from the Midwest. Gotcha. Thanks, man. Next question, we'll go to Graham Couch, and then we'll have Justin Rose. Tom, you've gotten a lot of different kind of play out of your point guards this year. And I'm wondering, as you go into a tournament that usually requires good guard play, what you're, what you're asking of them, what you're hoping from them, and what you're doing in terms of talking to them. I'm asking for consistency. I'm asking for good shot selection. I'm asking for uh, a, do a better job in our turnovers. I mean, we haven't been awful at times, but we've, you know, I, I think if there's one thing uh, that you'd have to blame the head coach for is we haven't had the consistency that you'd, you'd want out of your team, but between injuries, between changing positions, between some guys stepping up and some guys not stepping up. I mean, we, we have rotated people. I mean, the one thing we decided here, we're going to hold people accountable to doing what they can do. And if not, we're going to rotate them, you know, and that hasn't been uh, good in a way, but I'll tell you what, if you look at the last two, three weeks, we did start coming around and uh, you know, so was a uh, Maryland, the bad matchup or did we kind of run out of gas from what we went through too, with all those big games uh, maybe a little bit of both. So I'm not worried about trying to figure out why, because it really doesn't matter anymore. Um, this is going to be a slugfest Thursday night. It'll, I think it'll be one of the all time great uh, play in the games, which I'm, you know, still questioning a little bit, but uh, sticking with my theory of anybody, any place, any time, any place, we're at Mackey Arena. Any time, we're at 10 o'clock at night. 
anybody. We're playing one of the storied programs in uh, all the sports. I mean, UCLA basketball is UCLA basketball. I'm just hoping Magic gets the last word on Bill Walton. That's what I'm hoping. So the, the other thing is Mick Cronin's been pretty open about trying to build his program in a mold of what you've done at Michigan State. To, to hear a coach of UCLA, who when you took the job in 95 was winning a national title still and all the legacy there, say that about the program you built. Does, how does that resonate? It makes me feel great. It makes me feel proud. It makes me feel good. It, but I also know that, um, you know, Hugs and I are good friends and, and Mick was at Cincinnati. So he was a Midwest guy. And I think he respected what we did. I think he does coach his team hard. I mean, he's going to be getting after those guys now. I promise you that. I, hell, we were with him in Maui and uh, he, he got after him. So, uh, uh, I have great respect for him too. And uh, I love people that coach people and uh, he coached them. He holds them accountable. And if he thinks we've done that good a job and developed the culture that we've developed, I know he always liked the fact that our players came back and that, I think that's what he wants to do there. Um, that's, that's the ultimate compliment of all, but uh, he ain't taking no backseat now. It's not like he's a rookie. He's been in this for a while too. And he's done a hell of a job at Cincinnati and a hell of a job there. And so I think there's mutual respect, which is uh, great to have in these games. And these days when I think so many coaches are, as you saw in some of those conference tournaments, uh, you know, the Alabama, LSU, I mean, coaches are fighting each other. I, I, you know, I'm sure we'll be mad at each other, but uh, there'll be great respect. And that's kind of what you want. Our final question today comes from Justin Rose. Justin, you need to unmute yourself. There it is. Sorry about that. Uh, tournament time is always like that new slate, you know, the, the new season type of thing. But with a lot of these guys not really having a ton of NCAA experience because of last year's shutdown, have you noticed anything in practice maybe the past couple of days or in walkthroughs or shoot around? Well, you know, it's, 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 some of the veterans are excited because they've been there like Aaron and Josh and some of the rookies, I think, are a little nervous because even the Rocket and guys like that, you know, they weren't there last year. Um, it is, it is strange that we're talking that way. You know, we're talking about this big streak we had, and I got guys that never been to the NCAA tournament. <laughs> so it is different, but, uh, and that's been a little strange, but it's all coming together. And uh, you know what? The guys who play the hardest, play the best, play the most consistent, take care of the ball, are probably going to win games. And uh, that's been our battle cry. That's what we got to do. A lot of that will fall on Aaron and Josh. And uh, yet we've got, you know, Rocket playing, I think, better and better and understanding his role more. And, you know, we get Joey Hauser and uh, Malik and, and Marcus Bingham has been playing better. So, uh, you know, I'm excited to see how we play in this thing. I really am. Let's see what we do. Um, you know, we have a, an incredible opportunity. You know, um, ironically, Shaka Smart and I are pretty good friends. And, um you know, we played we played in Vegas two years ago against UCLA in Texas, and and uh, you know I, t I text Shock after he won the the conference tournament, not knowing we would play him, and uh, you know we were just talking about uh, all the things that you go through, and he's been through some tough times and and fought back, and I think that's the way it is with all of us. You know, everybody's wondering how their players are going to respond. Uh, his players didn't respond as well in the tournament for a couple of years. I think he's 0-2 in it. And uh, some of my players, I've had some guys that have been to a Final Four, I've had other guys that are juniors or sophomores and never played the tournament. So it'll be interesting to see, but I'm excited to see it. And I'm going to rely on Aaron and Josh a lot to uh, Jack Hoiberg, you know, to, to really uh, explain to people what it means. You know, I was talking to Jack this morning and you know, him being a little older than everybody else, he remembers the Jaron Jackson lost to Syracuse and what it meant. So everybody's got their own stories. And uh, my story is going to be, uh, let's do, do something that's never been done. And that's uh, for Michigan State anyway. And that's play three games in the same week in the NCAA tournament. Win the weekend, right? All right, Coach. Appreciate your time. Thank you. See you guys.